Hi, I am Susan Sweat. I'm at Cornerstone Government Affairs and I am your lobbyist for Child Help. Um, I'm really excited to have you all watching these videos as we prepare for your advocacy day, your virtual fly-in is what we call it. And we're gonna be giving you some background. So this is um, background on uh, one of our requests that we're asking you to make to members of Congress related to funding the National Child Abuse Hotline. Now you have um, an advocacy packet and some information on the website that gives you a lot of background about the hotline itself. What I wanna to talk to you a little bit about is um, the funding that we're going after and the mechanism that Congress uses to fund a hotline so that you feel a little bit more comfortable about what you're asking for. So you are going to be asking your members of Congress to support $2 million for the National Child Abuse Hotline. The way that Congress budgets money um, is called the appropriations process. So you're asking for $2 million in appropriated dollars for the National Child Abuse Hotline. What is appropriations? Well, it starts every spring when the administration, um, the president, sends over a budget request to Congress. Um, and this is a detailed outline of what the president would like the, um, the next fiscal year's money to go to. Um, they like to say that uh, the president proposes and Congress disposes um, of that request. So it's just an outline. Um, it, the president's budget is a suggestion. And then the House and Senate Appropriations Committees read that suggested budget and, um, and produce legislation that either gives the president what they've asked for um, or adds to what they've asked for or takes away what they've asked for or gives direction. You can have this money, but use it this way. Um, and they go through a very formal process in their committees to produce 12 appropriations bills. So um, all the different agencies from across the government have budgets that are submitted to Congress. Um, it usually happens in February. We're a little behind this year, but those budgets are submitted. And um, there are 12 subcommittees that take on one, two, three, or four different budgets from different agencies and produce a bill. The subcommittee that we are interested in is the Labor HHS Education Subcommittee. Um, we call it Labor H or Labor HHS for short. Um, and if you can maybe guess, um, it includes the funding for the Departments of Labor, Health and Human Services, which is HHS, and the Department of Education. And we are interested in getting funding out of that HHS section of the Labor HHS Appropriations Bill, and specifically within the Administration for Children and Families. So the Administration for Children and Families um, is um, an agency within the Department of Health and Human Services. They, are, um, they do a lot of work in the child abuse space or the recipient of a lot of monies from Congress that they dole out into different programs um, in child welfare. And uh, they have a pot of money, it's called discretionary, um, discretionary programs. And within that little pot of money is where we're asking for $2 million for the National Child Abuse Hotline. We have been asking for money for the National Child Abuse Hotline since fiscal year 18. And we're asking for money this year in fiscal year 23. Um, so a little bit about our history of funding. So we had never been in this labor HHS bill before um, 2018. Uh, this is brand new to the hotline. Um, you'll see in your documents, the hotline has been around since the early 80s. We're, in fact, we're celebrating our 40th anniversary of the hotline. Um, so we've been around a long time, but without federal support. And in 2018, we changed that. Um, in 2018, we received $1 million through that ACF discretionary account for an innovation grant. Um, this is a specific type of grant that they have at ACF that um, in conversations with ACF, they thought we would be well suited for. Um, and they, uh, you know, they, they encouraged us to try to look into what what possibly we could do to help make sure there was enough money um, in that account for them to be able to provide us with one of those grants. So in 2018, we lobbied successfully for a million dollars to be added 
um, to the ACF portion of the labor um, HHS bill. And, um, and so ACF received an additional million dollars that year and they ran a grant competition um, with a very short little 30 day window to apply. And of course we were ready for it um, and went ahead and applied to do text and chat um, on a national child abuse hotline. And so we won that grant competition and we have been able for the last several years to provide text and chat services um, based on that funding. Um, that funding is restricted to text and chat for 13 to 24 year olds. It includes a big research component and that funding is about to um, expire. So we're, we're going, we've gone through the life of that grant. It's about to end, it's end um, later this year in September of this year. And we are asking um, for $2 million because we wanna continue funding the hotline even after that grant goes away. Um, this is a request that we made last year. So if you'll think back 2018, fiscal year 2018, we got a million dollars. We got another million dollars in 2019 and in 2020 and in 2021. So we did really good um, and we're able to get uh, four years of funding at a million dollars a year for that grant. Last year in our 2022 um, appropriations bill, we asked for $2 million for a key term here for ongoing support. So I want you to remember that phrase. We are asking for $2 million for ongoing support of our hotline, of the National Child Abuse Hotline. And basically what that means is that instead of being under the confines of that innovation grant, like we were over the first um, several years, which was just text and chat and just 13 to 24 year olds, ongoing support allows the money to flow into the hotline for any operational purpose of the hotline. So we no longer have to, you know, nickel and dime, was this money from, um, from the federal grant or was this money fundraised money, um, you know, based on the age of the person who contacted us or the way that they contacted us. Ongoing support gives us a lot more freedom to support the phone part of the hotline, text and chat in all age groups. And so you're asking for $2 million for ongoing support. The great thing is you're asking for what they've already done last year in 2022. So we're just asking for the same thing to happen in 2023. Congressional offices will love to hear that. It makes their job easier when you're just asking for a continuation and not anything new or different. Um, it makes it easier when they're communicating what that request is to the committee. So that's going to be what you're asking for. So how does, a, how does a member office, when you go in and ask a member of Congress to do that, how do they actually make that request, uh, make your request into something? What, is, what, are, what are you asking them to do? Well, you're asking them to convey their support for the hotline to the appropriations subcommittee. Um, and the main way they can do that is by signing a letter that is going to the appropriations committee. The letter is, um, is a group letter that's being sent by um, Representative Stanton and Swiker. Um, we always, um, on these letters, they're called Dear Colleague Letters. We always like to have a Republican and a Democrat um, so that they're bipartisan. So we have a bipartisan Dear Colleague Letter to the Appropriations Committee asking for $2 million in ongoing support for the National Child Abuse Hotline. Um, and that's gonna be the easiest way for the members that you are meeting with to show their support for the hotline. So depending on if they're a Republican or a Democrat, to call Stanton, call Swiker, so Stanton for the Democrats, Swiker for the Republicans, and, um, and ask to sign on to th that letter um, that's gonna be going over to the Appropriations Committee. And that will show their support for $2 million. Now, sometimes you're gonna be meeting with members of the Appropriations Committee itself, and those members usually won't sign a letter that goes to the Appropriations Committee, right? They're on it. So instead, they will be filling out an online portal um, that, that the Appropriations Committee creates to capture all of the, um, the items that members of Congress are interested in. And so you'll be asking them to convey their support, if they're on the Appropriations Committee, to convey their support individually to the subcommittee on labor HHS education for $2 million for ongoing support of the National Child Abuse Hotline. It's a pretty straightforward ask. And this time of year is when all those requests come in. So I mentioned that 
appropriation starts with a with the president sending over their budget. We um, that's going to be happening uh, in late February um, and and into early March. So while you're doing these meetings. Um, there is a high likelihood that they have just gotten the budget request or they will have just, or they're gonna be getting it very soon. So once that happens, um, the Appropriations Committee puts up some guidance and says, you know, members of Congress, you have until such and such date to let us know what your priorities are for these bills. And um, that kicks off a whole bunch of people from around the country, just like you, coming in to talk to their member of Congress on every issue under the sun um, that they find is a priority for them. So this is that time of year when we're having lots of meetings, um, they're used to this and you're asking for something that in this, the language that we're using is very normative for them. Um, that $2 million in ongoing support in the labor HHS bill for uh, the National Child Abuse Hotline. So we'll do our meetings and um, and we'll make that request. Uh, members will sign on to the Stanton and Swikert, the Stanton Swikert letter, and uh, that that letter will be sent over to the committee. And then about the May June timeframe, um, that subcommittee will produce their their bill in the House. And a few months later, the Senate will produce its bill. And um, and then later in the fall, the House and the Senate will meet um, to reconcile the differences between their two bills. So once the bill is produced, it goes through a markup um, where amendments are offered to it at the subcommittee level, and then at the full committee level, and then on the floor of the House or the floor of the Senate. And, um, and those two bills are reconciled through a conference negotiation um, later in the fall. We expect, usually we expect that negotiation timeframe to be in the you know, September through December um, timeframe. This year, we think it's gonna get kicked a little bit into like the December, January timeframe because we have a big election happening um, in Congress in November. And so that'll take their eye off the ball a little bit. But um, sometime in the, in the fall or early winter, we will have an FY23, a fiscal year 23 appropriations bill finalized. And our hope is that with your help, we can get $2 million added to that bill like we've done before. Um, it's vitally important to funding our hotline. And we are very, very thankful to have your participation in this process. It helps us a lot. I can go in and talk about the hotline all day long and I do that a lot, but having a constituent come in with their point of view and with an, an experience uh, that, that really brings this issue home for the member of Congress that you're talking to is invaluable. So we are really glad that you're here participating in this. Um, we're gonna be doing a session where you can ask some questions. So hopefully I've given you a little bit of an overview for what the appropriations process is and why that $2 million is gonna be um, really helpful for you to ask for. So I uh, look forward to talking to y'all um, later on and um, appreciate your willingness to help us out in this way. It's gonna make a big difference. So. Thank you for being here.